All right, you guys. So here we go. Um, we're gonna get started on my Mohawk balayage technique. Um, this technique, what's so awesome about it is that it is super versatile. It is a quick application um, and it makes a really big impact for your clients. So I wanna show you guys my pre-done over here. Um, there is going to be ways throughout this application that I can show you guys um, different techniques you can do with the hairline, different ways you can change up depending on what your client's regrowth is. So we will get started on that um, real quick. I'll show you guys kind of right in here, big impact on that side and as well as underneath. All right, so real quick, we'll show her real fast so you guys can see that again. My pre-done here. So the, the purpose of this technique is to get a really big impact with the regrowth that we have, um, that we're gonna see with our clients, all right? So let me show you guys over here, some quick sectioning. All right, so I went ahead and popped in just some hairline highlights right here, and I'll go back and show you guys exactly what that is. But let's talk sectioning real fast. So through the top, we are going to start our sectioning by going from the recession point on your client. So you can kind of customize this based on what their hairline, what's happening with their hairline, okay? So I drop down right to about under kind of like her temple, because again, I'm going for a lot of impact here. So I went down below her temple. This would be her recession on her hairline. And we are going to section that all the way around into sort of like a half circle through the back. Now, the dip here in the back is important. And as we foil, I'll show you guys why, to make sure that you keep this rounded, all right, in um, that oval shape. So from there, you're going to section out right behind the ear and we'll pin that away and that will become her hairline. And I'll address this section in just a second. Let me get a little closer here for you guys too. Okay, so here's the rounded part that I was talking about. Now this next section is gonna go from the back of her ear to the top of her ear. Okay, and then same thing here. This is where we can customize her, her crown sectioning. And I will have pictures for this of this for you guys, just so you can see. I know it's a little bit tricky um, with these cameras at home, but I will have all the sectioning in details with photos up on Behind the Chair and my page and Joyco to share with you guys. All right, sec second section through the crown here. This is determined based on what you want your money piece to be in the front, okay? So depending on, getting close here to show you guys, depending on how much you want for your money piece right in the front, that's where you're gonna determine this next section, as well as the recession point on her hairline. Now, this part in here is different for everyone, right? Sometimes it's a lot deeper. So you might have your sectioning start a little bit farther back or a little bit closer, okay? All right, so let's get into this technique here. We're going to be starting um, in this back area right here, kind of just above the occipital bone. Now I dropped this pretty far because again, I wanna make a big impact in here and I will tackle this and address this um, afterward. So the first thing I'll do is pull up this section. I'll drop out right behind the ear and I placed two hairline highlights with my large foils and I'll show you the, those as we go. You just wanna make sure that your hairline sectioning here is a back-to-back -back sectioning. And what I mean by that is as you weave, you want to make sure that you are weaving and going front to back with your entire section. That way when you're on the hairline, you're picking up pieces that are coming right from the base. All right, so let's jump into this next section here. I'm gonna jump right in here. And here is the important part. Let's spin this a little bit in here. With, because of our sectioning, 
right in here with the swoop. This is going to allow for when I place my foil, it's going to create a little dip for me, which will help in when we go in to tap our hair. The goal with this and these lighter colors that we have with these clients, the goal is to really kind of only go in, set a quick tap, all over tone, and be done, all right? So I'm working with my large foils. These are the Reynolds foils. In this section in particular, I'm taking it from the width. I'm gonna fold that down in half. And then I'm taking my weave section here. And I'm placing that right into the center. Now, as I wrap this and I follow the curve of her head, it's going to help me get higher on the side of my weave and a little drop to the center, which I naturally want to create that dip. So I'm first gonna set my glue piece. This is what I call my glue. That kind of helps me just let go of the foil, especially if you're not working with an assistant. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down. I am working with Blonde Life and 30 volumes through this midsection. My hairline foils are Blonde Life and 20 volumes. And I always adjust my lightener based on people's hairlines. You wanna be as careful as you can when you are working with hairlines and the ends of hair. You wanna make sure that you really know what your clients have on their hair. So that way you can adjust your lightener based on what is previously going on in their hair. Just because they come in with dark hair, it doesn't mean that there isn't light underneath that. So you really wanna be careful that you are using the correct formulations. Okay, so as you can see, after I finished in here, I'm going to open air balayage the tips of her hair. Now, this is where I can get away with doing two different techniques in one sectioning. So after I finish, I'll take my foil and I'll place it over the top and I'm going to leave this, this open because I don't want that to process as quickly. Like I said, we wanna be mindful that she probably already has pre-lightened ends or they're dull feeling. So this is just a quick way to brighten those ends and I'm doing it all in one swoop rather than doing it in two different applications and going back. Now, depending on, you know, when I work towards the front area, depending on how much lightness and brightness they need, I might go back and do a couple closed ones through that section and that will just give me a little bit more control. But really with this open, air technique at the end, I'm really just looking for a touch of brightness. Now, whether you decide to pull that over, like through the ends, or if you just want to do it on the top, that's kind of up to you. And it's another awesome way that you can adjust this technique. So again, set my glue feather up. And now because of the round and because I wrap the foil all the way around using these big foils, I'm able to get higher on this side and a little bit lower through the end, or sorry, through the mid. And that sort of just helps set that shape for me. And then I don't have to stress about it as much when I go back to tone. Now, I am not changing my lightener here on the ends. I'm not going into the 20 volume. Again, you can if it's needed, but this I wanna work quickly. And because I know that's going to process open air, it's going to help slow down that application and, or sorry, slow down that processing. And it won't be quite as intense on those ends. Again, if she had, you know, let's say she had put a toner on her hair at home, because let's be real, sometimes we come in and we have these clients that they think they can do it themselves and they're just like, well, in between appointments, you know, 
I just wanted, I just needed a little bit, um, it was feeling too brassy. So that's not to say those ends are still not lightened, right? So we have to be very careful and very mindful of what our clients are doing at home. And we really don't want to get into a situation where we are compromising their hair at all. On these weaves, I'm doing a big impactful weave, okay? I'm taking all the way from this section to this section because I want a lot of impact in here and I want a lot of dimension happening. On this specific client, she would be a situation where she did not have a highlight in a long time and she could be that client that she was like, well, you know, I just used a lot of purple shampoo or I, you know, threw this toner on, um, lots of things where then she's feeling dull, right? And she needs a big revamp. So this is going to give me a lot of impact and a lot of dimension. And just really, honestly, I, I'll be curious to see how many foils I can get this done with, but I think it's gonna be pretty minimal foils. Doll heads are a little bit different than a person, but I know that this technique is typically, I'd say half the foils than what I use if I were to go do a full highlight and still get the same result. Section out that other hair. I'm gonna take this down all the way through her ends. Again, I'm using 30 volume, but if you needed to at this point, you could switch to 20 volume. I also, too, I have a wet towel over here next to me, and this is where I wipe off my glove hand. I wanna be able to work quickly through this, and I want it to stay clean. I don't wanna be messy as I work through this sectioning. So using these big foils, too, helps me cover a lot of ground. And by keeping it open like this, it's really easy to go back and check the work as well. All right, when I start to move to these wider sections, I'll take a subsection, meaning if my sectioning is a half inch, I will take a subsection right across the top of that so that way I know that I'm not gonna be too dense right here with my foiling. So, or sorry, with my weave. So now I know that I can dip all the way through this section and I won't be too dense. Okay, it's kind of like a little, um, little safety measure there. When you're working in your sectioning and you end up with those splotchy spots or um, you end up super orange through the top. That is when you know that you are working with too dense of a weave. Okay, so the toning process should really be to just sort of seal the deal on what you've done. It shouldn't be a corrective moment. Every now and then it is when we have, you know, we're actually correcting work. Um, from you know, past colors or anything like that. But for the most part, the toning should be what enhances your application. This part to me is the art. This is the, this is the sketching, this is the painting. And then we add color, right? With our toners to just enhance and make her feel custom and beautiful. Okay, so again, leaving that out and you can see right here, this is creating a natural dip for me as I go. Now I'm doing this sectioning knowing that my, a majority of my clients wear a center part, okay? If, let's say I had a client that always wanted to wear a side part, you could absolutely adjust this technique to go off of her part line. What you need to be mindful of though is the reason that we're creating this dip and this shadow in here is to help us later when we go to tone. So you just want to make sure that wherever her parting is, whether it's on the side, you want to make sure that your dip is happening there. So that way it's less work for us at the bowl. Okay, again, I'm going to address this section later. I'm going to move to her first hairline section. Now, this space in here, again, is dropped 
from the money piece. You have to establish how much of a money piece you want. Um, and that's where this extra corner comes in, as well as per recession point. A majority of people, it's a little bit deeper. And if I have this pulled out, then I know I'm going to tackle it and it's not going to get you know lost with this section. Because when your clients pull their hair back and if they see this dark track running through the side right here, they're going to say they're not light enough, they're not bright enough. Every now and then they're going to have these little kind of like baby hairs through here. And those I would just slowly kind of pull out and I would not put color on those because you also don't want to be blamed for the one who broke that off, even though, you know, most people have a little something right there. Okay, so hairlines can be changed as well. On a blonde, I like to do a veil type hairline, okay, where I'm taking an angle of parting, moving this way, so that way as this brightens and blonde, I'm casting a veil of blonde. Now, if I was working on a brunette, I would move my hairline sectioning to a horizontal placement because I want more dimension as this pulls back, right? I wanna see some depth of brunette through here because that's what's gonna feel more natural to your client. Now, there are some brunettes that are obviously going a lot brighter, so they want more of the veil option, but that's what's so cool about these techniques. And when you single out these sections, you can really customize to what your client needs. Now in here, this is that back-to-back -back sectioning I'm talking about, okay? So you wanna make sure that this weave is going all the way to the front, this one is not all the way to the front, this one is not, all right? That's gonna give us the biggest impact right around her hairline. And I would say the same thing if you were doing the brunette style, with your hairline. My formula here is the blonde leg, 20 volume. Switching back here, being mindful of what is happening on our client's hairlines, right? Being kind, being gentle. And you know, I love to talk to my clients about that as I'm working. I love to tell them what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And I feel like they appreciate it as well. And it kind of just shows them that, you know, I'm taking the next step, the next level with taking care of their hair. Prettiest hair is the healthiest hair. And I just feel like if a client understands that, they're more willing to just kind of accept the steps that you need to take. They're willing to pay for the steps that you need to take to get them to their desired look. Now, the one thing that I didn't show you guys because I already had her pre-sectioned and had applied it already is the Defy Damage by Draco. Um, if you guys have not tried this product yet, you've got to try it. It's absolutely game-changing. It is a um, bond strengthening, bond building product that you spray into the hair before you start any lightening service. And sometimes actually just as like an added treatment, I will put it into my client's uh, hair before I do a haircut. So I typically cut dry, so I will put it in before, I'll do the post series two at the bowl, um, and then I will come out, blow them out, and then haircut, give them a haircut. You just wanna make sure that you shake this product really, really good, get all the goodness that's in there. It's an aerosol spray. And as you do it, you're gonna spray down. Let's see if I can get this lady in here, my other client. You wanna spray down the shaft of the hair and away from the client's face, okay? Just like a hairspray, you don't wanna spray it right at them because then of course we're gonna overwhelm our clients, right? It has a great smell to it. Again, tell your client about it to explain what you're doing and what you're adding to their service. Um, and all of that just goes, all those little things, they go a long way with your clients, I feel like. The last step for that would be you'd comb it all the way through the hair. And then at the bowl, after you're done with your service, you will put on Pro Series 2 
leave that on anywhere for like five to 10 minutes, kind of depending on what the hair needs. I like to even add it before I um, tone. I comb through the hair, kind of makes it just like silky gloss before I work through the hair with toners. All right, so we're still tackling this hairline over here, working through this. I'm bringing this all the way down through the ends because I want the biggest impact here in the front. Now, just remember too, not that we don't wanna take time in the back of our client's head, but don't forget that this area through the back, it doesn't need our full 100% attention every single time your client comes in, okay? Like that hair back there is not going to be seen the same as the rest of the hair. So really, if you're in a time crunch, make the effort to really work around the client's front. And of course, we're gonna address the entire head, but really I can use that hair in the back to my benefit, benefit and it can become my low light, my dimension, and it's their natural color, which is beautiful. Okay, so as you can see, once I get to this recession point right here, I'm able to tackle that whole section in one foil. Now there's a little gap in there because that's gonna be addressed in the next section. But when I, when I have this weaker area through here, I am able to get in there and make sure that's being hit with a highlight through there. And then I won't have my client telling me as soon as I finish this beautiful highlight, oh, there's a dark spot. And we have to throw in one foil. All right, I'm taking those all the way up to the scalp because again, I want the biggest impact. Okay, right here on my ends, this is where I will go through. Again, I want a lot of impact. I'm gonna do a really light tease. If she needs a lot of blonding through here, I'll set my tease and I will put this hair in a foil. If she does not, then I can open air balayage. Kind of a preference on you as an artist and also a preference um, on kind of like the look that you're going for. And again, being mindful of what's on her hair. I like to kind of feather the front a little bit higher. And again, if she had pre-lightened ends here, then I know that I can work up into zone two of this hair and not just tackle zone one without too much warmth happening there because that has already been pre-lightened, right? And if I put it in a foil, then I just have more control. This one little tiny triangle piece, I'm actually going to leave that out and leave it alone because that's gonna act as a dimensional piece right behind all of these blondes that I just put here. It's kind of my other favorite part with working in sections like this is then I can drop that piece and I can be like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be a beautiful, you know, low light piece that will then just make this hairline feel that much lighter and brighter. All right, so we're gonna cruise through to the hairline here. Now, again, there's so many ways you can customize this. I'm gonna show you guys kind of like my pivot method through the hairline, just because I love the results of that. And what it does is I'm using my pop piece from the round of her head. Okay, that's kind of how I'm deciding how thick I want that. And in that entire section, I'm going to pivot my highlight to that point. So each time I'm going to section to that point and it's going to give me a smaller start to the money piece and then a big pop drawn down. This front one, I'll take right on the hairline because I wanna make sure that I do a big impact on the front. It will be back to back, I'm gonna drop through that entire section. So be mindful when you're taking this section that you can go all the way through, okay, without having to worry about that not giving you enough coverage through there, right? And you don't wanna to have to worry about it getting too orangey on you, especially in the front. Set my glue piece 
and then I'm gonna bring it all the way up to the top. Again, you can customize this to where it's going to fall. Like let's say she doesn't want it all the way to the root, you can start it an inch lower and then feather it up. But because of the sectioning, you're going to get still that same result where it's gonna be a little bit more, kind of more like come to a point right there. And as I work through, you'll see how my foils start to sort of fan out. That's how you know you're working in the right direction. All right, so I'm gonna go right here back to back, but as I move back, I'm now creating almost like this triangle shape, okay? So it's going to be thin to then thicker as I move this way. It's also giving me a lot of coverage. See, now I'm working back into this depth kind of through here behind her cul-de-sac, I like to call it. I'm dipping all the way, doing that. And again, I'm still working with 20 volume on her hairline. I moved to this section before I'm tackling that top because I know I need this area to be the brightest, okay? I need her hairline to be the brightest, so that's why I start in the way back. Then I move to her densest, darkest section. Then I move to the hairline in the front for that big impact. And then I will address the area on top, which is kind of, I use to my benefit of it being a little shadowy through the top. And that's going to help so that I don't feel like I am spending just as much time with the bowl toning as I am with the highlight, right? Because let's be real, sometimes we just do not have that amount of time with each client. Or sometimes they come in and they've booked something completely different than what they need. So now, you know, we're trying to, you know, under promise, over deliver. You see how this is starting to now slightly curve back as I work? I feel like a majority of the time on an average client, I would put four foils here for this section. And that would be it for the hairline on this top pivot piece. Again, the reason I'm pulling it all the way through the ends and not open air balayaging like the back is because I really want a lot of pop here. Let's say for some reason she couldn't handle the lightener in that area or we don't need to do as much there. You could absolutely open air balayage that piece as well. Again, super customizable. Okay, here's about my fourth one right in here. And I will leave, again, I'm still pivoting right to this section. And when I look at this, I would say that is a little less than an inch. That is kind of dropping back for that money piece. Checking that in there. This will be my last one set at an angle. I'm taking this all the way to the scalp. You can customize it any way you want. Sometimes this very last piece too, this last highlight, depending on how dark they are up here, like let's say it is a brunette that wants to have that money piece all the way. To help myself out, I will feather that last one just slightly dropped. And again, that's going to help me with my toning that I don't maybe hopefully wouldn't need to have a tack sit for 20 minutes on her head. Okay, now this last piece here, again, like I did this section here, it's a slight triangle section. I'm gonna drop that and I'm gonna check and see, okay, do I like that placement? Is it too much, is it too little? And use that as my depth, right? And kind of like my low light because this piece will only be as bright, right? As the depth that's behind it. Okay, so that's really going to give a lot of reflection there. If you want, you can come in here. You can give this a little tease through here. And because I want to keep the depth, don't forget that part, 
I'm gonna keep this down in my zone three down here as I work through the ends. This one, because it is in this section and it's most likely been highlighted, I would use my 20 volume test here. Again, just to be, just to be courteous. Now, because these are in a separate area, you can also really easily unfold this foil. And let's say it's lightened before what's happening here. If you wanna drop it out, you can drop it out and take it out. Same thing here, I can go back and let's say these, by the time I finish that, my open air sections here are already as light as I need them to be because they're out and open. If I wanna rinse those with some water, easy peasy. All right, so. I would then continue and finish the other side, but I'm doing too much talking. So gotta work through this for you guys. I'm gonna go back through my crown section here, okay? So this at this point on the top of the ear, this next section, it gets pretty wide. So I need to be very mindful and really make sure that I'm connecting these, high, these uh, foils through this section. So I'm taking about, I would say a half inch section as I work through here. And then, because this is so wide, I'm going to take a subsection. This is really just about keeping a lot of control and making sure that my density is not too thick on these foils. If you need to be like, oh, it's a little thin, I want more impact there, add a little bit more. Again, super customizable. Now, what's important, again, about this sectioning through here is that when you place the foil, and again, I'm using the Reynolds foil, this is the full thing, and now I'm going to go to uh, my width around this, I can't remember how to come out, width, length, something like that, okay? I'm going to take the longer side here, fold this down, and it's okay that this foil is gonna to be too short because that's my open air portion. I'm gonna place that at the top of the round of the head, reach that up, and now round this foil all the way down. It gives me about, I'd say an inch drop here, and it's touching the tops of my sides. Set my glue, right? Then I can kind of go back and check. I can fix anything if I need to. And then I'm gonna feather up from there. Now, if you can visualize this in your head, it's kind of creating like bursts from underneath. And this hair, as it lays over the top, is gonna to diffuse anything. And it's really gonna help me when I go to tone. My other girl, my pre-done over here, Real quick, let me swap these out so I can show you kind of the area we're working with. So on her, what I ended up doing was I just took in the liquid Luma Shine, I took 9NV and I literally just tapped it down. I left it for about five, six minutes. Then I pulled it all the way through, left it to remain at 10 and then I was done. I wasn't mixing two different colors because I kind of already created that diffusion for myself by dropping it. And if you can see, we want the most depth coming in this section. Now, as she moves kind of to the top, woo, we're gonna get those lighter, that money, those money pieces kind of happening from the top and it's instantly sort of creating this teardrop shape happening for me. Just really kind of a big, Time saver. Oh man. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully for you guys in the salon. Again, if you take your time here, then it's going to be just so much easier when you get to the bowl. All right, I'm gonna grab all of these. Paint down. If you wanna make this brighter, go front and back of this piece, or possibly on a brunette, just keep that foliage on the top part of her hair. Use my wet towel so I can stay nice and clean. And then on this section, this is where we switch our foils, the direction of our foil. So the ones to the back, I was going 
this direction with, the ones in the top, I'm going this direction. And I just like keeping it open, tackling two techniques in one section. All right, we'll go to the next one. Be mindful that you're covering distance. You're going all the way front to back, or I'm sorry, side to side, right above the ears. I'm going to take a subsection here. Okay, here's my subsection. Again, don't forget right here, this is your veil piece. So if that needs to be a little bit thicker, I know a lot of times wherever people part, sometimes they cannot be as thick there. So then drop in and grab a little bit more. I'm making sure that I'm weaving and I'm grabbing all the way from this side to this side. So we're covering distance and it'll create that burst coming from underneath. Typically in the salon, I work with an assistant and uh, since being home, you know, it's, it's uh, definitely pushed me to learn how to maneuver and hold these foils on my own since so those foils. And I feel like the foils are actually super helpful when you can like use them and manipulate them, right? They're not just a square, they can be rounded. Um, I know our girl Larissa has like some incredible different foiling patterns that she does. I mean, sorry, different, yeah, folding of the foils and all of that, which I, I just think is so creative and cool. So use that tool in the salon, use it to help you get quicker and um, use it to help your toning application. All right, so the other cool thing about this is I really can tackle a lot of ground and I'm gonna count my foils after I'm done with this because we're gonna get a full highlight impact with way less foils. All right, let's see if you guys can see. I really want you to be able to see this section up in here. Hopefully you can see that okay. So again, this is on the round still, right? Because when I came around, we were able to make that kind of like a horseshoe shape. So I'm splitting this. Now, right here, my last, my very last section, this hair now becomes my veil, okay, over my pop. So I, again, want to make sure that this isn't too thick and also that it's not too thin because if this is brought all the way up, I need to make sure that I still have some softness and some veil. I'm using this depth as my veil. Okay, so I'm going to put that forward. Sometimes I even come forward again, like I said, and double check. That's going to lay in beautifully with that piece. And I'll probably end up tipping her just even a little lower or then take it even higher, depending on what she needs through there. Okay, so my last section here, the subsection, okay, ends up being not a sliver, right, because we want to impact, but it definitely is more like a, a generous slice, and then right on that part line, you need to add a little more. Do that too. Make sure you don't get too thick on the side and too skinny through here. If anything, you'd want to go in reverse, a little bit thicker to thin. Because I have the subsection, I can cruise right through it. Almost like a back-to-back -back foil there. Okay. Take my large foil. And shape it in there. Really kind of sneak it up in there, curve it out, use that to your ability. Set the glue in there. like so, and then I'm gonna feather up. And because that's tighter, I can kind of still feather on the same line. If you need to, if you're having a hard time with the curve of it, then you can push it up there because it's easy to see, which is great. So let me turn her again so you can see here. Once I get there, I pull this down. And because I set my glue up there in the front, then I don't have to worry so much about my foil slipping. Grab here and balayage down. Customize this how you like. Again, because I'm leaving it open air, 
this, that 30 volume is not going to process as quickly as what's happening inside the foil. Two techniques in one. Now again, just to recap, super um, easy to then go in, like let's say you got through this part and you were still feeling like she needed a lot more talk happening through here. You could go back through now and you can even open air balayage and tip out those ends or you can put it into a foil. This back section in here that I had left is now when I would address what's going on in here. Now that I've tackled the really important stuff, which is where my plants want to see the lightness and the brightness in the front, now, if I have extra time, this is where I'll go in and tackle. And it's not much. It's kind of just that hair that's just under the occipital bone. It really can work to my advantage, and it can be depth for me because I had that hairline highlight that's going to bring the pop to the front. This then can lay behind and have depth, or I can go in and tip out these ends as well. Same thing on the front sections. I can go in and tip out any of these money pieces that I want in the front just to give more brightness to her face depending on what she needs. So that is pretty much the mohawk technique. You can see it's covering a lot of ground this direction and working back this way. Um, if you guys have any questions, please um, make sure that you are typing them into the chat box and asking anything that you want. Um, we will do our best to answer as many as we can. And we'll be doing a Q&A later that um, we'll be able to answer some more questions too. So also, I just wanted to mention real quick that Joyco is doing a giveaway, you guys, of $1,000 a week. Through this COVID time, it is just so awesome to see these companies that we support, right, by buying their, their brands and their products, that they are supporting us too. And they are giving away $1,000 every week for the rest of the year. So make sure you guys visit that page if you haven't already and sign up for that. 